The hand sewing that I do is laborious and painstakingly slow. Piecing together broken bits of ephemera and salvage materials that reference trauma, loss, resilience, and survival. They hold tension and are fragile and age alongside us. I like to think that they are our shadows and reflections as we move through space and time. My parents were Holocaust survivors. My father often let us know that he was treated inhumanely, like a shmata, a rag, something used, worn out, unwanted, damaged, devalued, and discarded. I took rugs, a metaphor for downtrodden humanity, off the floor. I reinvented and transformed rags into emotional narrative portraits that were celebrated on the walls of museums and fine galleries. Working with natural materials in the form of fiber arts has opened up a lifelong art making practice that allows me to transform my grief and sadness into joy and inspiration. As I got older, I started using this practice of thrift as a way to make my own style, my own wardrobe, and I would collage different garments, I would hem things and mend them as needed, and I really had a passion for the history and the textiles that I would find in thrift. And this practice led into who I am as a fiber artist. My mended collection um, of works all tell a very unique story with the fibers and the textiles I used in them. I utterly fell in love, like my spirit fell in love. And it was because of like two, two really big things, I think. And one was the discovery of the way um, weaving and textile practices in general, but specifically weaving, is used throughout every single peoples and cultures in the world. And so finding the different ways, um, like doing all this research and finding out different ways of how people have created cloth, essentially. And then the other part was really learning how to grow my own dyes. Um, and that happened in Montreal when I was in grad school. I was with a cohort of two women who had farming backgrounds and I had never farmed. Um, and they were like, oh, you, you're into natural dyeing? Um, why don't we grow our own? And I was like, what? You can do that? And I mean... And I just fell in love with the fiber and the color and the texture and the feeling of yarn. And I think it, it was the material, but then with knitting, it was the enchantment of making something seemingly out of nothing. I was always going to protests and marches. During this time, I came across a book called Your First Quilt Book by Carol Doak. I looked at this book and I thought about how we were making signs for each protest and the signs would get trashed and we would have to make new ones. I thought, what if I made a banner that I could use over and over instead of disposable signs? It would save time once it was made. So I started quilting and pretty quickly the banner idea fell by the wayside and I just became obsessed with learning about quilt making and quilt history. Uh, I had an incident where I broke a hand and my mother purchased me a little uh, loom that you could make whatever. Uh, pot holders or something with and that's how I started weaving and from there uh, I never uh, I never stopped worked in studios um, was a student at the Goblin in Paris at the weaving studio and continued my uh, professional career right on from there art museums or galleries like the folk art museums in which I saw folk artists, um, outside art, 
and also quilt making. And I like the stories in which they told. My father works journey began as a child. My older sister made a lot of her own clothes and so there were a lot of scraps of all these different beautiful fabrics I and I was able to use to create doll clothes. So one day I see this picture on Facebook from Vandana and it says, does anyone want this loom? So I replied, I'll take it and I'll put it in my classroom. And we brought it over and set it up and then it was this great thing in my classroom. I, we had it all set up and the kids would weave on it and they would create shared weavings, kids of all different ages. And it was really awesome. And then I kind of started to get interested in weaving. It's become something of a worldview for me. I love taking these pockets of surplus and finding ways to redistribute them. I love taking these inchoate piles of fabric and um, giving them new meaning, reinforcing their existing meaning, making new compositions. Um, I have found that it's something that I can do for myself and my family and as a service for other people. Textiles and weaving have been a passion and a form of self-expression for me ever since my college days. The field is so broad and deep, I'll always have more to discover. I was most interested in actually the back side of that because uh, there are so many loose ends and that's what I call the piece, loose ends. It, it was a real reflection of my life. I never draw anything out. I just look at whatever I'm going to embroider and I just start using the needle and thread in the way someone might draw or paint. Uh, that's true with the piece that um, is in the Threading the Needle show. The best way I can describe the feeling I had was a very deep knowing that weeding was meant for me, that it was something I had to try. The tactility of it, the warmth, working with my hands, all resonated so strongly that there wasn't a question after that class of whether I would continue to weave. It was an absolute compulsion. Um, every spare minute I had when my daughter was a baby was spent weaving and at the loom. The reason I'm so much drawn into textile and garments is primarily because of the connection to the body. Clothing has this intimate relationship with our body and it can easily shift the way we feel, the way we function. It can make us confident, it can help us be someone that we just aim to be or to perform like some, something we aim to be. There was a textile artist that came to my school and she did a workshop with us and uh, that workshop consisted of doing a drawing on a piece of fabric um, and then stuffing it and um, stitching it and quilting it and um, that was when I realized that I was an artist. Uh, I think I still to, to this day um, work with the media of drawing and now I've switched over to knitting. Um, from that initial exercise in quilting. Uh, it was just such a welcome meditative retreat from the intensity and stress of pandemic life. And I found something very meaningful in the process of taking these random fabrics and bringing them together into a colorful whole at a time when it really felt like everything else was coming apart. By incorporating crochet and embroidery and knitwork into my mixed media pieces, it allows me to construct a tactile, tactile representation of my exterior and interior environments that relate to the home as both a physical place and as an exploration of self-identity.
I was born in the refugee camp when I sixth grade, and then I learned the embroidery at school. Every week on Friday is thirty minutes every week. When I come back home, I try to pray by myself too. As a child, I loved to embroider, sew, and knit, all fostered by my mom. Both of my grandmothers were avid craftspeople. My mom's mom was an excellent sewer. I still have the plenty notes she kept on the fabrics and colors she used to decorate her home. My dad's mother was an Armenian genocide survivor. She was a peace worker or was a seamstress for a living. At home, she was either constantly crocheting Armenian lace or sewing. And I wanted to combine my studies in environmental studies, my passion in fiber arts, and make a social practice project. So I made simple garments, bought secondhand, and taught myself mending and natural dyes. And now that's the center of my work. Um, my studio work is that sort of combination of fiber arts and slow fashion.